Hello and welcome to this video, folks. We are going to be talking about how to filter with dates in the query function. Now, the query function is the most powerful spreadsheet function ever, especially for working with data, because it can do pretty much everything a pivot table can do, but it's a formula, so you can combine it with other formulas and all sorts of other useful things. But it's kind of tricky to work with when you're getting the hang of it at first. And one of the most difficult things is how to work with dates in the query function. How do we filter our data sets to just show us data in a certain time period? And in this lesson, we're going to look at how we use dates in the WHERE clause of the query function. So let's dive in. All right, so I have a data set and it has a date column, an order time column, and a time stamp column for us to use. And of course, I've gone and named it, uh, given the entire data set, a named range to make it easy to use. So, so we'll bring back some data first, a so query, sales data, select A, B, C, and we'll start with this data. And if I scroll down, there's dates in 2014. So let's go and find all of the dates in 2014. Try that first. So we'll start there. Okay, so let's just try filtering that now to be in 2014, essentially. So we'll do, we'll see where C, which is the column C back in our original data, is greater than 12. 31, 2013, so the end of 2013. And we get an error because it just doesn't like, it's looking for C greater than 12, and then it meets that forward slash and says, I don't know what you're talking about with this forward slash. I don't understand that. Okay, so maybe what we need then are some quotes around here. Let's try that. So we'll put quotes around this. That's more promising. We don't get an error but we don't get any values back either because what it's doing now is treating this as a string, as if it was letters and it's going and searching in our data set and looking for a string that matches that. It's not looking for a date. Okay, so that's not working either. So let's go back to our language reference because I think we need to do some research here. And I'll point you to the right place. We're going to go down and look at different language elements called literals. And literals are the values for comparisons. Aha, comparison is what we're doing. This sounds promising. Literals can be strings, numbers, Boolean values, that's true or false, and date or time types. Now look, that first example there tells me right off the bat that we need to be using this date keyword. We're missing the date keyword. So we read down a little bit further and it says here, use, use the keyword date followed by a string literal. So let's try the date format. So again, we'll copy this one and we'll say date, put that date word in. So C greater than date, ah, still in uh, getting an issue. So an invalid date literal. Date literal should be in the form year, 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 month, month, day, day. And of course that was written here as well, I just, wanted to see the error <laughs> first. So let's go and do that now. Let's go and take this now. And finally, let's fix this into the right format. So 2013 is the year, 12 is the month, 31 is the day. And then we get all our data back for 2014. It actually filters that data. Uh, no problem now that we've got it in the right order. So that's great. Now, what about when the date is in a cell? How do we reference it when it's just in a cell? So let me copy that into here, that one, and we'll clear out there. So we've got the first quote, we'll close, we'll go ampersand, reference the cell back into the string, close off the quote. So we need the two, the two quotes, and then we close, and then uh, we we put our header row in and then we hit one and we get the error because the date is now in the wrong format. It's treating it just as a number because dates are 
numbers in spreadsheets is not in that format. Let's flip the format round of this and see if that does it for us. So we'll come down to custom date and time and we'll do that format there. That's what we want. We'll say apply and it still is not recognize this because it's treating this as a date, which it is a, a number in spreadsheets. So if I actually convert this just to a number, you'll see it's actually stored as a number by the spreadsheet. Um, and so it's not being interpreted correctly. So what we actually need to do with this one is use an intermediate formula first, which let's do down here called text. We need to convert that number, that date number into text. So there's the number. And then what format do we want? Well, now we can just put the format in from the text uh, literal format, which was over here, which was year, 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 month, month, day, day. So let's copy that, come back over here, put that in, close that off. And that looks better because you see it's left aligned now. That means it's a string, whereas this one is right aligned, means it's a number. So let's now copy that. And instead of just referencing V3, we'll reference V3 inside of this text formula. Then we'll hit enter and there we go. Now that works and just brings back everything after the 15th of December. So it doesn't matter about the formats of this one here. It could be back in the original sort of date style format. We need to convert the date into a string using this text formula. And the text formula takes the number and converts a number into a string based on some format that you give it. And we've just copied that format from the language reference. And this is probably one of the most frequently asked questions about the uh, query function. How do I filter dates in my query? So once you master this, you'll be able to filter your dates and it just takes a bit of getting used to it. You just need that word date, uh, the text function, and then don't forget, you need to still include the opening and closing single quotes around that string. Great, thanks for watching folks. That's all for this video. Now this video is a lesson from my query function online course. It's the most comprehensive resource on the internet for the query function. So if you found this useful, if you use the query function a lot, I really encourage you to go and check out that course and see if it might be something that is interesting to you. So the link for that course is below this video in the description. Otherwise, have a fabulous day. See you again soon for another video. Bye for now, folks.